Alright audience, continue from part 1. Now I'm going to show you that the dazzling disturbance from the ordinary car headlight is to a really dangerous extent. This transparent board here represents your car windscreen. And the water here of course represents the raindrops on your windscreen. Okay. Just give me a moment. So let's see how dangerous is the effect of the dazzling disturbance from the ordinary car headlight. I'll turn box 1 so that the ordinary headlight on side A is facing to you again. Having it switch on, so it represents headlight of car Y. Well, if you see anybody other than me is crossing the road, please stop your car, okay? Or at least please yell stop, okay? Please get ready. Audience, please tell me what do you see on the road ahead now? Can you see someone is crossing the road? Other than me, you know? Can you? Can you see this young girl is crossing the road? Please stop your car or you'll be too late. Can you see this young girl again? Please hold up your arm and use your hand to block the headlight. Can you see this girl? I'm afraid you can hardly see through your windscreen. I'm afraid you can hardly see the road ahead, am I right? Alright, let me switch off the ordinary headlight. Can you see me now? Have you get back your eyesight? I think it may take you 2 to 3 seconds for you to get back your eyesight, am I right? When you are driving at night, do you think that this is dangerous? Yes, this is very dangerous indeed. And I would want to call this the unrealized danger or the unrecognized danger. Of course they mean unaware or unknown danger to the drivers and to all road users. This will happen especially when the driver, you audience, the approaching headlight and the object. The object here is a running child where they form a straight line or close to a straight line. But why is this happening? My question is why can't you see clearly the object beyond the approaching headlight? And why is your eyesight coming back to you so slowly? This is something to do with physiology of our human body or of our human eyes to be exact. Are your eyes feeling better now? Sorry for making you feeling a little bit of eyesore moment just now. Let me switch on the ordinary headlight again but facing to the backdrop this time, ok? And I'll turn the light turn invention headlight on side B to face to your side. So it represents headlight of car Y, alright? Please get ready. Can you see the road ahead? Now let me explain. First, there's something I would call a danger distance. Second, something to do with our basic instinct. The danger distance is when two cars of opposite directions are approaching to a distance say less than 200 meters and forming almost a straight line to the object ahead. 
where the object falls within the low illumination area or beyond the illuminated area of what our car headlights can give. But at this moment, our eyes have started practicing the basic instinct to protect our eyeballs from being hurt by blocking away the strong ray of light from this approaching car headlight, which is car Y. So you can hardly see the objects beside or beyond the approaching car, but only that dazzling headlight. In physics, we see objects and the colors of objects when the rays of light are reflected or bounce from the objects and then traveling into our eyes. The rays of light pass through a hole in the eyeball called the pupil and the shutter called the iris. Well, if you can recall from your science classes, and at the same time, the ray of light from the approaching car headlight, which is the source of light without bouncing on any object, but is directly traveling into our eyes. Biologically, when there's too much of or too strong the ray of light, the iris will make a smaller pupil so as to allow less ray of light travel into our eyes in order to protect our eyeballs from being hurt. Well, if you can remember the eyes of cats. So, the objects which produce much weaker rays of light than the source of light, they can hardly be seen. There's the same principle for this. Let's say you are in a very high noise pollution area. You can hardly hear the ticking sound of a clock. And you can even hardly listen what people say to you. Am I right? Well, the eyes are instinctively protecting themselves. And when the approaching car passed, we need some time to get back our eyesight as to allow the pupils to dilate. This is naturally happening to you and me and everyone. But because this happens normally within a few seconds, maybe between 3 and 5 seconds, so we did not recognize this matter as a danger. Or, so far, there isn't any good solution worldwide. But undoubtedly, there is a danger, am I right? And, if the approaching headlights pass by slowly, this 3 to 5 seconds blackout situation can be much longer. It will be even worse when your car windscreen is covered by raindrops. You can hardly see through your windscreen. Because many tiny sources of light were refracted from the scattered raindrops on your windscreen and traveled into your eyes, the iris is making a very small pupil so you can hardly see through your windscreen. Don't simply take my words. But from now onwards, when you're driving at night time, try and observe this phenomenon yourself. Especially during rainy seasons at night, okay? And allow me to add on, for those of you who closed your eyes just now, it's not your eyeballs which were practicing the basic instinct, but you were practicing the basic instinct yourself. Well, you are driving, you know. Can you close your eyes when you are driving? Hmm, in a dilemma? Mind you, there are some drivers who love to switch on their high beam when they are driving. Never mind if they themselves realize or not. And there are even some other people who modify their headlights with very strong power of output. They are speaking of how many thousand kilowatts of power. Well, I should think these people are a bit too self-centered and not considering for other people's situation 
and safety. Anyway, do you still see a road ahead? If yes, can you see the movement of the object ahead? Can you see this younger? Can you see this younger is crossing the road? Please stop your car. Thank you. Well, if you still can see the movement of the object ahead, with this new invention headlight switch on and facing to you, thank you. This new invention headlight is successful. But why? Very good. Because instinctively, the iris is not making a very fine pupil. So the object which produces similar rays of light, it can be seen, am I right? Half of it. Why is the iris not making a very small pupil this time? Well, thanks to the objective of this new invention headlight. It is specially invented and is specially made to minimize the dazzling disturbance from car headlight to other drivers. While enhancing the power of illumination and so to reduce the unaware or the unrealized danger to the drivers and to all road users. Please take note, this invention is to minimize and to reduce, but not 100% prevention to the dazzling disturbance. Because, first, if 100% prevention of the dazzling problem is to be achieved, then the light may be too dim for illumination purpose. Second, at certain angle, this invention headlight is still disturbing to certain drivers which fall in the area of that angle. For example, the opposite traffic drivers which come under the L-shaped illuminated area. However, the number will be greatly reduced. Well, this will be further explained under the technical presentation and Q&A session. Nevertheless, this invention headlight does help. At least it reduces dazzling disturbance. Do you agree? Well, scenario presentation ends here. Now let me open the windows and switch on the showroom lightings. Thank you.